Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite garment to wear, the Ganzi. I was in high school when I was in ninth grade. My sculpture teacher was my favorite teacher, Mrs. Burke. And Mrs. Burke came from Cornwall, England. And she always had a knitting project. Like she'd come into class and she had this little bag with her. Uh, her knitting was fantastic. And she was a big influencer for me in terms of knitting. One day, Mrs. Burke came to class and in her knitting bag were these long needles so I asked her what she was knitting and she said, oh, I'm making a Gansey. I had never heard the word before, but thus began my infatuation with the jumper or the sweater that I'm now wearing. A Gansey is a traditional fisherman's sweater. And lots of people in Britain and in, in all over the English and Scottish coasts know the word Gansey. The origins of the word go way back we think to the 1500s when Queen Elizabeth I set up an actual knitting guild on the island of Guernsey. This thriving industry, the cottage industry of contracted knitting, the knitting of socks, stockings, and gloves, it reached its heyday in the mid 1700s, but as the Industrial Revolution started and mechanization of knitting was invented, knitting saw a very sharp decline, hand knitting, because mechanization made these garments so much cheaper. But what did survive, survived mostly in very rural areas, especially the remote islands, like the island of Faroe, uh, the Shetland Islands, Faroe Islands, and that is where we still, still today, see this practiced. A Gansey is a workman's garment. This was not something that was created for gentlemen, people in town. This is something with its origins mostly by the coast. Fishermen living by the coast. And this was a practical garment. These patterns are what really give these Gansies their iconic look. Every fishing village, every coastal area had their own patterns. And going back two or three hundred years, these patterns and the way they were knitted were, were jealously guarded. They didn't share this knowledge publicly. These, the patterning of these sweaters makes it easy to identify where they came from. There are motifs that often reflect the actual lives that these, these fishing people were living. There are patterns of actual nets, like down here, we have a pattern that's a net. There are chevrons that are like herring bones in, in fish. There are diamonds, anchors, and then there are cables. So you can see here on this Gansey that the patterning is from the neck to right here and it stops. And it's because this is the part of the Gansey that would get the most abrasion while you were working out on a boat. The other thing about the patterning is it serves a very practical function. All of this patterning creates these little pockets, these little raised areas where the body heat is trapped. And what these little pockets do is it creates more insulation here to keep this part of my torso warmer. These garments were worn at a time when these fishermen would go out in, in small boats into the open ocean. And it was very common for boats to be lost at sea. The bodies of these fishermen would not wash up where they left the shore. And it was often by the patterning of the sweaters that they could send the bodies back. So there is this beautiful melancholic history to the function of the patterns of these garments. The Gansey is not knitted on two needles, it's knitted on four or five needles, and it's knitted in a circle. And we start the Gansey right here, at the base of the welt, this, this ribbed part right here. 
The very base of the Ganzi is knitted with a double strand of yarn. That's where the yarn is taken not singly, but doubly, and knitted as two strands of yarn. And they do that only for the first five or six rows to make this hem very strong and sturdy. Rough, hard work, salt water, cold, wet. This has to hold up to that. So this first half inch is double, and that's what I've done here. I finished the, the first half inch, and then I went single for the other half inch. I have an inch done. And then the garment is continued up, and it comes to the armholes, at which point they split in two. And then it's knitted on two needles. So the front would be knitted up on two needles, and then the back would be knitted up on two needles, and then when we get right here to the shoulder, it's joined again and knitted up. And then the neck is knitted onto this seam. Then we have two holes at the arms that are empty. The stitches get picked up around the arm and the arm is knitted from here down to here. And it ends here. And that is really important for the practical aspect of a Ganzi. Because these sleeves were the place where this, the garment would start to fray first, because imagine you're doing all this work on a fishing boat, this got a lot of wear and it would start to unravel first here. And because it was knitted from here to here, when the thread, when the yarn unraveled here, the fisherman's wife could easily pull back the yarn to past the damaged area and then re-knit in the same pattern down back to the cuff and make a new cuff. So this is a very practical aspect of how these garments were constructed. So the sleeve is knitted down. As the sleeve is knitted down, a gusset is put in right underneath the sleeve, a little diamond shape. It's actually a square when it's flat to aid in the ease of the sleeve. Very, very simple. Usually, historically, we have some documentation. A good knitter would, would be knitting about four hours a day. And at four hours a day, a, a Ganzi could be finished in two or three weeks. When you're knitting, there are only two types of stitches. There's the knit stitch and there's the purl stitch. So the knit stitch, when we're knitting in the round, creates this, okay? These, these tiny chevron-like stitches. The purl stitch is a horizontal line, and the combination of the knit stitch and the purl stitch is what creates this patterning. If you have a single purl stitch between knitted stitches vertically, then the purl stitch disappears, and that's used in the side of the Ganzi, where they mark the side of the Ganzi just for their own sake, so that they can keep these sides apparent to the knitter while it's being knitted up and they mark it by making a purl stitch. And the way that we can see that is if we pull apart the side, we see one or two rows of purl stitch going up the side seams of the garment. And that's to help the knitter know this is the place where the gusset is going to start. A true Ganzi is a blue or gray sweater made out of worsted wool. And this is a very important part of these sweaters. The type of yarn that is used for knitting up these sweaters is a, a very tightly spun yarn of a long staple length. This worsted wool that is spun in Yorkshire still has some of its lanolin in it, and the lanolin is the grease from the sheep. What that does is it, it creates a kind of polish to the yarn over the years of wearing these garments over and over, and I don't wash them very often, there's a shine to the wool. The lanolin also helps to keep this garment, um, it keeps me warmer because it locks in the warmth of my body. The type of sheep determines the quality of the wool or the traits of the wool. The best wool on a sheep is the shoulders and the back. So the fleece that I have here is from Border Leicester Sheep. And this is my favorite type of wool to spin. 
when we cut the wool off of the sheep, we can pull it apart into what are called staples. When I do this, where I take both ends of that staple and I pull it, this is the length of the staple, okay? The longer the staple, the more fine yarn I can produce that remains strong. So as this is spinning on the spinning wheel, it gets thinned out. And because it's so long, it means there are fewer ends per inch. If this staple length was very short, if it was from a different breed of sheep, or if it was from the belly of the sheep, then the staple length would be really short, and then we can spin it, but when we go to pull on it, it's not as strong, and it will break apart easily because there are many more ends per inch. I started with one Gansey. And when I say I started with one Gansey, these are not things that I've made. I, I cannot make a Gansey. I, I leave this to the professionals. All of the Ganseys that I have, and I have four, they were knitted for me in Yorkshire, in England. There is a knitting collective that is a very rare thing. It's a knitting collective in a small part of Yorkshire that employs four or five women to knit these sweaters by hand the old way. This tradition is dying though. Fewer and fewer young people want to learn how to do this or to take up the practice of actually uh, knitting for commissions like this little collective in Yorkshire. So I do encourage anyone out there who's even vaguely interested in knitting a Gansey to get some books, and I'll show you my favorite book. This right here, it's Michael Pearson's Traditional Knitting, and this is kind of a Bible in the knitting world. All the information you would need to knit a Gansey is in here. But I also have a couple of other books. This right here is a book that was given to me secondhand. There were a couple of women that visited me one day at Pioneer Village while I was on the spinning wheel, and they were from England. We started talking about Gansies, and they said when they went back home, they had a book for me. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, this arrived at Pioneer Village with my name on it. So sweet. Beautiful little book about Gansies with patterns in it. And then this one is a great book that I believe is still in print, Cornish Guernseys and Knit Frocks by Mary Wright. If you're interested at all in this world of Gansies, I will put uh, links in the description of this video. I would really love to keep this tradition alive. For me personally, I would rather have very few articles of clothing that mean something to me every time I put them on, rather than having a wardrobe full of things that changes every season. I have no interest in that. To me, the richness and the meaning that comes with wearing something that someone knitted specifically for me. Every single stitch was formed by one person's hand. That, to me, almost feels like magic. They're so precious. And I encourage anyone out there who is interested in commissioning a Gansey or to make one to really do it because you'll share in this joy that I have of something as simple as a sweater that keeps you warm in the winter. Thanks for watching, goodbye.